Good morning and welcome to Wild Wednesday here at the Kansas City Zoo. I'm your host, Allison, and we're here with Andrea today inside of Stingray <laughs> Bay. Good morning. So this is one of my favorite buildings here at the zoo. Great. It's so peaceful. Yes. Even when there are lots of kids around like there are today, they're having a really good time because this is a place where you can come at the zoo any time of year, right? Yes. So one great thing about this is it's open all year round. So in the winter when it's cold, you can come in and it's nice and warm. Ooh, it's perfect and I love it, especially when it's nice and toasty in here. So inside of Stingray Bay, we of course have stingrays, but we also have some other animals too. So let's kind of talk about all the species we have inside of the pool. Sure, here. yeah. So currently we have three different species. Mm -hmm. um, we have the cow nose rays, which are these guys right here. They're named cow nose rays because the front of their face kind of looks like a cow's okay. nose. Okay. Um, we have our southern stingrays, which are right here. They have the more pointy, like triangular shaped nose. Perfect. Um, and then we actually have a really small species of shark oh. um, called the white spotted bamboo shark. Okay. Now I've seen a couple of the sharks lurking yes. and swimming around, but yes. I also see over there in the corner, I see them yes. kind of all in a cute little puddle, yes. <laughs> a little cuddle puddle. We always have like a pile of sharks in here. So they're mostly <laughs> nocturnal. So during okay. the day, they're mostly sleeping. Right. Um, they'll come out a little bit. You might get one or two that's like kind of swimming around. Okay. But if you want to see the sharks, you got to come in and look around the rock islands. And okay. usually they're all in a big pile all they're just together. A giant family of yes. love, shark love. Yes. I love it. Perfect. <laughs> now, we, of course, these guys live here at the zoo. Where would we find them out in the wild? Yes. So um, they're mostly found in the Atlantic Ocean. Okay. So if you're in the United States, anywhere up and uh, up and down the coast, yeah. the East Coast, you can find them. Um, they kind of live differently in the wild. So the cow nose um, like to live in very large groups. Mm -hmm. They migrate in really large groups. You can find cool. thousands and thousands like migrating up Whoa. and down the coast. Um, the southerns tend to be, they'll either be like solo or just in pairs. Um, they're also the ones that more like to bury themselves in the sand and be more on the bottom of the ocean. Very cool. So that's, I noticed too, there are multiple levels within this exhibit. So it was created, I guess, to kind of accommodate the lifestyles that these guys would naturally have. Yes, definitely. So definitely to accommodate that, but also like we like to give them a deeper area. So if they want to get away from the visitors, they can. So that's we like smart. to give them choices. So if they want to interact with the visitors, they can come up to the more shallow land. If they want to get away from the visitors, they go more into the deeper oh, land. Everything is designed with intention. Yes. I like that. <laughs> yes. Now you mentioned interacting with the public. Yes. So this building is kind of special in that people can get really, really close with the animals. Yeah. So it's really great here at the Kansas City Zoo. You can come to Stingray Bay and you can actually touch our stingrays or you can feed our stingrays. Okay. So we have a couple of different opportunities for you to enjoy them. And I think I think, you know, people in general, anything you get to touch or interact with, you know, it makes it all the more well, better. Hello. <laughs> that's so cute. Yes. Oh my gosh. That's okay. You, you just, just watching I just say you just proved yeah. the point right yes. there, didn't you? Yes. So you get an opportunity to come and touch. And like you mentioned, we can feed them as well. Now it's really important. When I first came in the building, there were some very important instructions. Yes. And one of those things was to wash my hands, yes. but there was no soap. Right. So I'm confused. Yeah, so <laughs> these guys are very sensitive to anything going in the water. We have a great Woo, we have a great water quality system set up for them to take away anything bad that might be in the water that might harm them. Um, but soaps and lotions and stuff like that can irritate them. So we ask when you come in that you wash up to your elbows because you always get a lot deeper than you think you're uh -huh. going to get trying to touch them. Um, but we don't provide soap because we don't want any of that soap going into the water that, that could so potentially sense. harm them. You know, you have to think these guys aren't just like swimming in the water, they're breathing the water, all of their life oh. is in that water. So it's really important that we keep it really clean for yes, them. Yes, that makes a lot of sense. But it's simple things like that that we just don't think about. Right. But these animals, they need us to think about those things yes. in order to survive here in this yes. fun little pool. All right, now um, when you when you get to the pool, after you've washed your hands and you find a spot here at the pool, it may take a while for the yes. animals to come up to you. Yeah. Because again, it's all about choice. But when one finally does decide to lurk your way, what yes. then happens? What, what's the yes. what's appropriate way to touch yeah. our Yeah, so we do have some instructions mostly to keep you safe, to keep the animals Perfect. safe. Perfect. Um, so we ask that you touch with two fingers. Two fingers. Down okay. along the back. We don't right. want you to touch their face or their tails just okay. because one, they don't like it. And two, it's, you know, more of a risk if you're touching in those areas. Yeah. Kind of down the back is the safest place to touch. So if they come up here, we can see, you definitely want to push your shirt yeah. sleeve up. 
Um, but the two fingers is just so you don't accidentally grab them, don't accidentally scratch them. Oh. But then you're able to just kind of touch along their backs. They're very soft. You can get a great yeah. feel with just two fingers. So yeah. it's definitely plenty to be able to um, use the two fingers. And you can stay in here as long as you want. So you I can. know some people are like, oh, I'm only going to get a quick opportunity. No, you yes. can stay in here all day. Yeah, and I to. think a good tip is to actually find a spot and wait rather than trying to run around the pool because they, they're always gone by the time you get to a spot yes. where they just were, you know? <laughs> so it's good yeah. to just pick a spot, kind of wait for them to come over. Um, the cow nose rays are definitely more friendly than the southerns. The southerns will come over, but the okay. cow nose seem to really enjoy the interactions with the people. Even if you don't have food, they'll come over <laughs> just to say hi. Just to so, say hi, and we've yeah. seen that a couple of times. We've seen some waves today. So we do know there is a touch opportunity here, but there's yes. also feeding opportunity, and feeding yes. is a little different. So yes. explain how feeding goes here. Yes, in Gray so, um, so these guys don't have teeth like you and me like you would think of. They more have called crushing plates so and they have that because you know they eat a lot of clams and crustacean and fish in the wild sense. so they need okay. something that can crush through those shells um, so when we feed we do feed fish here mostly um, the visitors will feed fish um, but we don't want your fingers to accidentally get in, your, get in their mouth yes exactly <laughs> so you know they don't intentionally bite they don't come after you trying to bite but if your finger is in the way it might get sucked up into their mouth. So we do try to um, have you feed a certain way. So I okay. have some fish here I can kind of show you. Yeah, let's see. Oh my goodness. So, oh, so Okay, great. So this is lake smelt. It's one of the fish that the visitors get to feed. Okay. Um, so we ask that you kind of hold it between your fingers Perfect. like this. I'm going to give you a fish too. Oh so my goodness. So you can participate All as right, well. here we go. So, and then when you put it in the water, you either want to put it flat on the wall like this uh -huh. or all the way down on the bottom flat like that. Okay. And the reason is they're going to come over the top of you and they're going to grab the fish and suck it out of your hand. Okay. So if your fingers, if you're holding it like this, your fingers are in the way. Okay. So we don't want you to ac accidentally suck their fing your fingers up in their mouth. Okay. Um, so a nice flat hand and then they'll um, come up and kind of suck it out of all your right. hand. Let's give it a try. I do, yeah. <laughs> And they kind of, they're kind of like a little vacuum cleaner. They'll just suck it right up out of your hand. Or sometimes they have trouble finding it. <laughs> I'm not, am I not being helpful? Here, I'll come up. <laughs> Do you know? Can you sense that I'm a little nervous giving you this fish? <laughs> right. I get it, I get it. I'm so, it's so It is fun to watch all the people feeding because like, it, it is kind of intimidating when they're coming up to take the fish and some people pull their hands out right before they get it and some people, you know, drop it, but you know. And it's so slippery. I'm like, oh yeah. no, I don't want to drop your delicious meal. I'll try again when yeah. somebody comes over. Well, yeah. what, kind of, what kind of fish are we actually feeding these yeah, guys Yeah, so today? this is lake smelt. The visitors will feed lake smelt in Capelin. Okay. Um, the keepers will also feed shrimp. Um, we do give them a vitamin twice a week. So uh, nice. the shrimp is kind of more valuable. So we save that for vitamins mm -hmm. um, so that we make sure they all get their vitamins. Ah, yes, nicely done. <laughs> Very cool. So these guys get vitamins like us? What do they need vitamins for? Yeah, they just for? get a multivitamin. Um, the fish do lose some of their nutrients because it all comes in frozen. So okay. through the thawing okay. process, they lose some of their nutrients. Um, so we just give them a vitamin just to make sure that we're kind of supplementing all those vitamins nice. that are lost. That's really fish. cool. I mean, and we have to do that too as human beings. We have to take vitamins to make sure we're getting everything yes. we need. So that's yep. really very similar. That's really yep. fun. Oh yep. my God. Well, these guys are super, super cool. We've learned how to touch them. We got to remember, wash your hands when you first come in here. The two finger scientific touch is very important. Mm -hmm. And then also making sure that when we feed them, we've got that flat hand either on yes. the bottom or yes. on the side of the glass, which is really cool. Now there's one more thing. People hear the word, uh, Stingray, and yes. they get a little frightened at that that word at the front of yeah. the animal's name. Yeah. So, what can you? How can you ease our minds about sure. that? Yeah. So, these guys do have barbs. They're at the base of their tail, but here at the Kansas City Zoo, we trim them to make sure that they're not sharp and pointy, mm -hmm. so that nobody will get stung. But I will say, like these guys don't actively seek other animals or things out to sting, it really is just a defense mechanism for them. Right. So the only time they're even going to attempt to use it is if they feel threatened, scared, things like that. Yeah. Um, so you know, it's, they don't normally feel that way. They're not going to come chasing after you trying to sting you. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of a myth that some people think. Mm. Um, they really just use it if you're trying to hurt them, they're going to use it to try to get away from you. Um, but like I said, there's nothing to be worried 
about here at the Kansas City Zoo because we trim their barbs, we make sure that they can't sting you. Yeah. Um, and we, you know, we check them pretty much every day to make sure, and we trim them like periodically because they kind of grow like your fingernails, so they wow. do grow back. But we wow. we make sure that they there's no chance of being stung yeah. here. So this is a very safe place here at yes. Stingray Bay. We make sure you stay safe and we make sure our animals get to stay safe too. Yes. Andrea, this was really cool. Great. And I'm so glad I conquered a fear today in feeding <laughs> Stingray. It's taken several glad months for me to be able you. to do yeah. that. Thank you so much. Yes. Well, it's been really fun here at Stingray Bay. Now you guys have seen these guys and you love them. Make sure you come see them in person. However, I will say, I've got a challenge for you. There is one more Stingray on grounds here at the Kansas City Zoo. But she's a little different, and I'm going to let you go and try and find her. I'll give you one clue. She likes tropical weather. So make sure you go and try and find our friend Billy Ray here at the Kansas City Zoo. But until then, thank you so much, yes, Andrea, for such you. a fun time. Yes. And we'll see you next time for Wild Wednesday. Bye, guys.